R107 500 SL values. One of our subscribers called me earlier this week and wanted to talk about 500 SL values. And I think that that's kind of cool. Interesting, you know, because the 500 SL is the anomaly of the 107 world. It has its own market. The 560 SL market is a, about the closest you're going to get, but 500 SL, own market. Now, would you think, here's the question, would you think that I was lying if I said that the 500 SL, especially the 1986 and later version, could potentially be a $100,000 car? I want to see what you say, so leave a comment below. And by the way, if you haven't liked this video yet or shared it, you should do that too. Um, anyway, I I actually did not believe this until 2015, when I discovered that the that that it that that at a sale in England there was a 500 SL that was a low mileage car, it was a 10,000 mile car that sold for well over the uh, six figure mark. And then I started discovering some other 500 SLs that sold at or near the six figure mark. This is mostly reserved for the 86 to 89 second generation 500 SL, but values of the first generation cars are really strong. And we're going to take a look at some of these values so that you understand that when you go shopping for one of these cars, you're gonna to have to pay up if you want a 500 because 380 money or 560 money is just not gonna get you into a good one. So let's talk. 500 SLs in poor condition tend to sell for something, something like five to twelve thousand dollars. I'm talking about a car that might run but needs paint, has a cracked dash, may have a little rust here and there, might need a bunch of interior wood trim or seat leather or a timing chain or brakes or a soft top you know or all of them might have some federalization stuff too like us bumpers but that's that's where you're gonna have to start shopping if you want a project if you want a really nice 500 sl the bottom the bottom door you know the bottom level of entry starts at around fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars, and may go all the way up to thirty-five thousand dollars. Now, if you want a really nice five hundred SL, and you don't mind getting into a generation one car, the door opens for like a a car that may not have all of its records in order, and may have been repainted, and may have like a you know, a little bit tired leather and, and, you know, might need some underhood attention and some emission stuff removed. The bottom door is like twenty two to twenty five thousand if you get lucky. And if you if you're, you know, playing with the market and especially if you're a buyer in Europe, you may have to spend thirty five to forty thousand dollars to get a to get a really good number two original car. When you start looking at cars that have ultra low mileage then you're you're going to be in the 50,000 plus range. Now, what do I mean? Looking at a documented, not an odometer, swippity swappity car, or car with its factory instruments, 25,000 miles or less, um, good ownership documentation, which is rare in the States with gray market cars and really isn't much better in Europe because of winter driving conditions and stuff like that. You're going to be over $50,000. And um, probably the best numbers you're going to see on a Gen 1 car for a 10,000 mile car or less, you're probably going to see eighty-five dollars to $100,000 for an absolutely perfect, no questions asked example of a 500 SL. A car that does not have uh, any um, any any red flags or anything like that. Now, when you're getting into Generation Two cars, I say probably add anywhere from 25 to 50 percent as far as values go. Mostly because the Generation Two cars are higher performance. Some of them had 10 to 1 compression. 
they're perceived as faster, more powerful. They don't just have that cool Euro look. They're perceived as a true factory hot rod. There are some 560 SLs in this specification as well. They're extremely rare. Most of them went to Australia, but I, I understand some were made for the European market. The question is, you know, whether I can document that or not. So if anybody owns one of these Euro market left-hand drive 560 SLs with 300 horsepower, I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And um, please tap the bell for notifications. I want your opinions in the 500 SL below, which I've already gotten quite a few of. If you own one of these cars, consider yourselves lucky because they, they are the king of the 107 convertibles. We're going to talk about values and how to hunt for a, a 107026 in another video. But in the meantime, we hope you got a lot out of this one. And if you're supporting us on Patreon or you've given us a like or a share, we really appreciate you. And don't forget to sign up for notifications so you can get more great content from us in the future. Enjoy your Mercedes R107 no matter what model it is. And if you have any questions about buying a 500 SL, you can always get in touch with me. And if you need any advice on purchasing a 500 SL or any 107, leave a comment below.